It's hard to say that they've been doing a great job. I think that sort of Wall Street was looking for an acceleration in growth and they weren't really getting it. I think 2020, after all the investments they made in migration to the cloud, was supposed to be a nice margin expansion year. They've got a lot less uh, indexing to hotel than booking, so a lot more greenfield opportunity. They're rolling out supply in multiple countries across the world. And so all of a sudden, out of the blue, you get kind of this growth cut, uh, you know, cut outlook. And, you know, I, I think it was a big surprise, almost like the announcement today. So, Kevin, I mean, we're seeing the stock rally like six, six and a half percent today on this news. But there are some bigger, uh, potentially much more challenging issues facing Expedia right now, whether it's the SEO search and what's happened with Google, whether it's the competition, whether it's this need to push into short term re rentals. Uh, how does that play out? And I guess how sustainable then is the bounce we're seeing in the stock today? Thanks. Yeah, I think uh, it's important to point out that Expedia is a healthy company. Uh, they'll do over 110 billion of travel bookings next year, um, and they they do over a billion in operating income. Uh, over half of their bookings are in high margin uh, lodging. So when you look at some of these uh, some of these pressures like. Uh, declining free Google traffic, definitely an issue, but there's also a lot of opportunity, and I think that's why, uh, I think it's one of the reasons you see the stock react positively today, particularly when it comes to uh, the potential to do some cost-cutting, uh, given their low margins today. Daniel, who could run this company? Are there already names being tossed around right now or a na name that you would like to see? You know, that's a really tricky question. I think everybody liked Dara's leadership before he took off uh, for Uber. Uh, I don't know that there are any sort of uh, organic choices within the company. I think externally it's hard to see somebody just slotting uh, themselves right in on the long-term outlook here. I think, you know, near term, since SEO was an issue, clearly having Barry Diller, IAC, right, you know, that could lead to some immediate uh, fixes uh, without putting somebody in place. So I don't think you're going to see any near-term hiccups, but you're going to need to have somebody come in who can actually run the long-term plan here. And I'm not sure they have somebody you know, earmarked for jo that yet. Josh, what's your take on this ruthlessness from Barry Diller? Do you love it, hate it? Well, uh, I think Barry Diller, as the most interested shareholder in the equation, ought to get his way. It's the way we've built uh, the markets, and it makes sense to me. I'm just curious for, for either of you gentlemen, are there too many uh, options for booking travel. I know there's been some consolidation over the last 20 years, but maybe not enough. And let's also keep in mind that they all, they compete directly with airlines and directly with hotel booking as well. So it's like, how many of these should there be to right-size this market? Look, I, I would tell you that you have a lot of options, true, but we haven't really seen hotel get their act together until maybe the last five years. You know, they've tried a bunch of different solutions and just haven't had any traction. I think if you look at the bookings growth rate across the industry, uh, you can see that hotel has maybe started to take back a point or two of share, but it's not been super meaningful. I think the bigger battleground where you probably see that consolidation is in alternative lodging. I mean, that's really where you get, you know, the Airbnbs, you know, maybe where Expedia went wrong was with the Verbo rebrand. I don't know that that was very well received. The growth rate's been very muted there. And so alternative lodging clearly has a lot of room to consolidate, but kind of core OTA, I think, you know, we're sort of in a good place there. We'll see what happens, you know, recession, counter cyclicality, maybe we get some there. Maybe the story looks a little bit different, but in the near term, I feel like, you know, the player base is about right. Kevin, can we see divestitures of some of the brands within the Expedia portfolio? Now, when you look at the, the slide that you had up there, a number of those brands are actually owned by Expedia, and most of them are running on a single platform. So if you look at Hotels.com, Brand Expedia, Travelocity, Orbitz, those are all on a, the, basically the same platform. Uh, so they've already realized uh, you know, a number of cost savings there. You're not going to see them. You're not going to see them get rid of those. And I think Daniel, when, you talk about consol yeah, when you talk about consolidation, you have three huge players, and that's Expedia, uh, Booking.com, and Airbnb. And so we've already seen significant consolidation there. And the fact is, is consumers like to go to a site where they can compare across the millions of lodging options, and that's what these sites are providing.